Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Thomas and I'm a Project Officer at Wildlife Queensland. Today I'm going to be doing a short presentation about a project that we've had on the go for the past year, searching for spotted tail quolls in West Logan. This project was funded by Logan City Council Enviro Grants. So what we've been doing is setting cameras at private properties in West Logan to try and detect the threatened spotted tail quoll, which is a species that we like to focus on at Wildlife Queensland under our quoll seekers network. So today I'm going to be talking about the ecology of the spotted tail quoll. And then I'll dive into a bit about our survey, what we did and the results that we found. And then we're going to talk about the threats that are facing the spotted tail quoll and the conservation actions that we can take to help it, as well as a very important question. Can quolls survive in Logan? Some of you might be aware already that we have a few different species of quolls in Australia. And this is a lovely infographic to show um, those different species. So we've got the spotted tail quoll up the top. That's our biggest species of quoll. And then we have the eastern quoll, western quoll and northern quoll, which are all much smaller. As you can see on the distribution maps, all quolls have had population declines and range contractions since European colonisation and the spotted tail quoll is no different. A bit of information about the spotted tail quoll itself. So it's mainland Australia's largest carnivorous marsupial. It's a lot bigger than the other species of quoll. The males are usually about three, three and a half to seven kilos, which is pretty big. And the females are a bit lighter at around two kilos. They have really large home ranges. For the males, that can be 300 to 1000 hectares or even greater. And they are really highly mobile species. This is because they need a lot of prey to keep their energy requirements up and they need to search long distances to find this prey. So they like to eat um, other mammals like possums. Um, I've got a picture of a possum here. They also like to feed on gliders or anything else, really birds as well. They're not too fussy. Um, they are mainly solitary animals and they are active at night because that's when their prey are active and that's when they're hunting. Um, the females breed and give birth once a year. They have a really short gestation period of just a few weeks and then give um, birth to these tiny little pouch young. There's a picture uh, on the bottom here and they will stay in the pouch for a while before she then deposits them in a den. So this could be like a little rocky crevice or a tree hollow or a fallen log. What did we do for our survey? Well, we set um, monitoring cameras up at five private properties in West Logan throughout August, winter, and just coming into spring of this year. Um, so the cameras can detect the quolls from a combination of motion and heat or any other animals that are wandering around. Um, we had on average about five cameras per property out for anywhere from two, four, or even five months. So all, all together, this gave us 1,000 trap nights. We baited the cameras first up with tuna oil to try and detect the quolls, but then realized how much um, the bush turkeys love tuna oil, and so then we changed our bait to chicken necks. Once we collected all the cameras, we then searched through all the images and made a species list for each property and kept an eye out for any images of spotted tail quolls. So what did we find? Well, unfortunately, we didn't have any quolls, which is a shame. But um, on, the, on the plus side, we had a lot of different types of wildlife. So 58 native species and eight non-natives. Um, these native species can be further broken down into 16 species of mammal, six species of reptiles, and 36 species of birds. So that's a lot of birds. And we really noticed in particular that on two of the properties, we had one camera each on a permanent source of water at a creek. And we got a lot of birds in these 
cameras that you wouldn't normally see um, on the other cameras that don't have that permanent water source. Lots of robins and honey eaters and bowerbirds, so that was really exciting. Here's a little selection of some of the wildlife that we saw. So in the top left hand corner we've got the beautiful brush-tailed Fascagale with its big um, fluffy tail. So this is also a carnivorous marsupial, much smaller than the quoll, and we detected that at all five properties, which was exciting. Below that we've got the echidna, which is always lovely to see on cameras as well. And then the swamp wallaby on the right hand side, again, very common. And we saw that at all the properties. Above that, we've got the lace monitor, um, which is checking out the, the chicken bait. And then that bird in the middle is a brown cuckoo dove. So that was one of the birds that we saw whenever we had a water source in front of the camera. So another bird in the top left hand corner, the eastern yellow robin, a very curious bird that follows you around as you're setting up cameras and we detected that at every property as well. We've got the little pied cormorant on the right hand side, a bird that was just restricted to the cameras with water sources. And then excitingly down the bottom, we've got the koala, which everyone loves to see. Um, that's really exciting to see because it's listed as a threatened species like the quoll um, and we saw that on two two of the neighboring properties so that's great have we seen quolls on any images from our cameras well unfortunately there are a lot of factors that are contributing to the decline of the quoll it's not one simple answer one of the main factors is habitat loss so this is down to a range of different factors. In southeast Queensland, it's been because of a lot of urbanisation, agriculture and some selective logging. So with habitat clearing, there's also the loss of big old trees in the landscape. Now, big old trees have tree hollows and things like gliders and possums like to shelter in tree hollows during the day. Without these big old trees, that can limit the prey availability for quolls and contribute to their declines. There's also competition from feral predators like foxes and cats that um, sometimes like to eat the same food as the quoll. So we saw foxes at every property on most of our cameras. We didn't see that many cats, but cats can be a little bit tricky to find on cameras. There can also be direct conflict with humans through vehicle strikes or because quolls love to eat chickens and so when they get inside people's chook pens and eat the chickens that can make people pretty unhappy. Um, and finally climate change and all that comes with that such as hotter and more severe fires which can affect the habitat quality for the quoll and its prey. This means there's lots of conservation actions that we can take to help the quoll, both as individuals or community groups. So revegetation is a really important one, which can help us to link up areas of quoll habitat and help the quoll move between these areas so that it can search for enough food to eat. Maintaining good quality habitat condition for the quoll is also important. So if you're lucky enough to own a property with some bushland or work with a community group that has some, some nature refuges, then you can work on weeding or pest control or ecological burns to maintain high quality habitat. You can also drive slowly at dusk and dawn to avoid vehicle strikes with quolls or any other wildlife and keep quoll safe chook pens if you have chickens. We at wildlife.org.au have a page about the quoll seeker network which you can go for further information and report any sightings. If you see a quoll we'd love to hear about it. And finally helping to end land clearing and associated habitat loss which is beneficial for the quoll and a lot of other threatened species. 
So the important question, are calls in Logan and can they live here? Well, we think at the Call Seekers Network that it is possible that calls can live in Logan. We're not sure if they are living there at the moment or perhaps they're just passing through and that's um, where some of the detections have come from. Um, we There was a scat in, a call scat in 2021. There's been ongoing community sightings since the early 2000s and there have been po possible positive detections from detection dogs since then as well. So we are determined to keep looking. At Call Seekers Network, we've done pretty much ongoing monitoring using cameras, detection dogs, or searches for latrines, which is the areas where calls deposit all their scat in the one place. So it can be a really good way to look out for them. So please contact us if you see a call. Um, please help out by some of the actions on the previous slide and we can all work together and hope that calls can live in Logan um, and continue to survive and thrive here. Thanks for listening to this little presentation on spotted tail calls in Logan. If you have any questions or you'd like to reach out, my email address is on the slide below.